The original and the correct way to tie Jack's knot is like this. You thread the hook, you place the line crisscross like this with the tag on the back side of the line. That's how much tag you're going to use. You come back here and you flip this over thumbnail to thumbnail in a nice big loop and then you bring the tag around the two lines below and through the loop and trap that on your index finger with your middle finger and then you slide it down to the hook and you can see uses very little tag to tie this. Now I've been noticing a lot of misinformation on uh, this knot. Uh, there's a lot of videos showing it being tied wrong. The way that uh, this misinformation started, Orvis News in 2018 had a feature on my knot and there were a number of people commenting on the knot and a gentleman that has an online knot tying uh, feature uh, commented saying, well, the knot was a knot that was in a 1944, uh, I think it was 1944 anyway, um, uh, knot tying book, and it was a knot that was used to tie animal snares, snares to uh, catch animals. So it was not an original knot. Um, it's an original fishing knot, but the way it's tied is what's important. The way uh, it ends up being shown on a number of videos and other sites and his site uh, being tied wrong is because of the way he's showing it being tied. Uh, it is not tied the way I tie it. If you tie it the way I tie it, you're going to have a lot better uh, results. It's going to be a lot faster and a lot better control, especially if you're using regular fishing line. Uh, you can tie it the way they show it uh, with fly line or a big line without any trouble, but the smaller the line you get, the harder it's going to be. So um, I want to kind of clear that up. The knot is tied in about five seconds like this. It uses very little tag. There was a mention in um, the most recent issue of Fly Fisherman Magazine comparing the knot to the Davy knot, and it said that um, the Jack's knot used about 30 percent more tag than the Davy knot used. Well, if you tie it the way that is shown on some of the videos, yes, it will use more tag. But if you tie it the correct way, you can tie it with very little tag. And uh, you can control that by how much you start with. Now, one thing about my knots, all of my knots are tied with reverse loops. That is, they're turned over loops. It might be turned over thumbnail to thumbnail. It might be turned over the opposite way where you, the tips of the thumb would be touching each other. I call that a, uh, this is a jack's loop and I call this a reverse jack's loop. Or you might uh, reach down and get the main line and make a loop with it. And there are knots that are being tied with that, especially uh, my loop knot, my non-slip loop knot. I discovered that if you make the loop with the uh, main line, either reverse or uh, regular, uh, and go through the loop at least three times, it'll make a non-slip loop knot and you can adjust the size of that. You can watch my video on that, which is called Jack's um, non-slip loop knot, and see how, uh, how I tie that. There's a number of ways it can be tied, but the key is to using a loop with the main line instead of a loop with the tag. Um, I think uh, because uh, in my line-to-line -line knots are tied also with loops, uh, the same loop, turn the, turn the loop over, and I think this is a paradigm shift in knot tying. It, uh, it really simplifies things, but just consider, if you start out with this, and you make this loop, how many different things can you do with the tag? You can do it the, the regular way that I did there. You could go, what if you just went through the loop several times? And this is not a uninot. You can do that. Uh, that'll make a very good uh, strong knot. Uh, you could um, maybe go around the loop and through the back and down and around. Uh, there's several different ways you could tie, but
But look, just think about this. If you start like that, you got that as a platform, you can just do all kinds of knots. And I have actually, uh, I've got bunches of uh, knots um, uh, with, uh, and some of them very good knots. Some of them very strong knots. This, uh, this knot where you go here and you go through the loop five times, for instance, not a uni-knot. I call that Jack's 3.0. I've got so many 2.0s that it's, uh, say, it's like, like that. It's not a uni-knot. It's stronger than a uni-knot. It's stronger, in my test, it's stronger than a uh, trilene knot, stronger than a Palomar knot. Um, the way I test knots is I tie two hooks together with a line, take a force up, hold each hook, and slam them apart. Um, I think that's a pretty good test because most uh, fish break lines not by a steady pull but by a sudden hard jerk. So um, if the knot survives that, then it's a pretty good knot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, another video in which I show that particular knot and a couple other very strong knots. But I, I just want to show uh, how this, uh, this knot works. It's, uh, as far as is I'm concerned for most people this is the best knot. Um, I had um, a gentleman come into the shop where I work, actually somebody else brought him in, and he had the uh, fingers of this hand sliced off down through the thumb. So he couldn't tie knots. He was looking for a knot tying tool, and I didn't really think the knot tying tools were going to help that much, but I showed him what we had, and you know, he decided he just wasn't able to do that, but I kept thinking he could tie that, he could tie a jack's knot, because all he has to do is clamp it right over here, be able to clamp with what he had left of his hand. I can't show that too well, but uh, he could do it and then do everything else with the right hand. Well, it turns out he actually could. Uh, he could do it quite easily, and he found a knot that he could tie. And he, he came in with his wife, and when they left, uh, they both had tears in their eyes. It was just a life-changing moment for him. And I think uh, kids really take to this knot. Uh, people who haven't uh, experienced tying knots and haven't been corrupted by ideas that you had to tie a knot a certain way, they really take to it really quick. Um, I even had a grandfather come in. Uh, he was looking for something uh, that he could use to cover the, knot, the hook with. Uh, because his grandkids were poking themselves in the finger with the tips of the hook. And so uh, since you can tie this knot with the hook down here, you just tie it, then it slides down to the hook. I showed it to him, and that was the answer to uh, what he needed. So uh, this really uh, is uh, a knot that you ought to familiar yourself with. Um, I use the knot... Uh, I, uh, I've caught many big bass, steelhead, and salmon using this knot in lines up to 17, uh, maybe even 20 pound test as, uh, for the salmon sometimes. And I um, use the knot in braided line on my casting rod. Um, I do, uh, sometimes um, I would suggest going through the eye twice with it and maybe instead of around once, around two or three times, but uh, it's still it still works quite well just tied the original way, even in braid. So um, I think this is a, a knot uh, that if you're not familiar with, you ought to become familiar with. And understand that when you see the knot being shown on other sites, they're not quite tying it right. This is the way that it's to be tied. Crisscross the line on the back side of the line. Nice big loop turned over. Go around the two lines and through the loop, trap the tag and down and then if you're uh, not, it'll disappear. It doesn't leave a knot if you're using something like fly line to practice with and that's a good way to practice it. So um, I hope you can use the knot and I hope you've found it uh, very useful. Uh, thanks for watching.